Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker, I'm glad I had the opportunity to speak on this bill after the member for Cryer. Um, prior to question time and our community 90 second statements and the matter of public importance and other matters, uh, the member for Cryer gave, well, I'll give him points, an erudite speech to this chamber about this bill and why he would be supporting it, but putting forward an amendment. The challenge I had was that rather than being a constructive discussion about Australia's foreign relations and why we need to make sure we had measures of integrity so that if different levels of government who were not responsible for our foreign affairs as by the constitution was doing so consistent with Australia's national interest, that there be integrity behind those measures and they be made in Australia's exactly. national interest. Instead, what we heard was this sort of rambling speech of interference to give cover to particularly the state government of Victoria for subverting this very parliament, this very government and Australia's national interest. And that is the fundamental problem with the opposition's approach, is that they're more interested in playing the politics of foreign affairs than securing Australia's national interest. And frankly, any member who stands in this chamber and aspires to sit on this side of this chamber should be very cautious and very wary of doing so. Because when we see actions where you see a state government signing agreements with foreign governments which may not be consistent with Australia's national interests, may not have informed the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, may not have run them past this, uh, the, uh, the current government or previous governments, I might add, you have to question where their priorities lie. And the point of this bill is actually extremely straightforward. That state governments and entities, other levels of councils, where they have responsibility, where they choose to negotiate with foreign governments, make sure they run their agreements past the people elected in this place. It's hardly a radical proposition, despite the efforts of the opposition to run interference against such a proposition. Because this parliament under the constitution that was negotiated between the colonies and the now states over 100 years ago recognised that different levels of government had different responsibilities. The states have responsibility for service provision and scale, for providing for the taxation arrangements, to provide support and assistance to the Australian community because there was an understanding that they have a greater relationship, a greater proximity to the people that they are elected to serve. And that this parliament, representing the whole of the Commonwealth, its relationship is around standardisation, but critically Australia's relationship to the world. That's why we deal with immigration. That's why we deal with trade. That's why we deal with foreign affairs. That's why we deal with defence. Frankly, that's why we shouldn't be dealing so much with taxation, but we'll leave that topic for another day. And so our job is to negotiate foreign agreements. Our job is to negotiate treaties. Our job is to negotiate trade agreements because we don't make decisions on parochial interests of what is in the interests of certain state capitals or states themselves, but against the state of the Commonwealth, of all of us. And when we have states that seek to subvert that process, and seek to put forward their parochial interests against the national interests of our country, whether it is economic, could be health, could be security, or the long-term sovereignty of our nation. That should ring alarm bells. And so I absolutely applaud the efforts of the foreign minister and the prime minister and the government in bringing this bill forward. Now, this bill does not affect one piece of uh, one agreement negotiated between one state, one entity between another entity. It covers all of them. But clearly, and as someone who's spoken out very strongly against Victoria's negotiation 
of an agreement under the Belt and Road Initiative with the Chinese Communist Party without informing this parliament and this government. Something needed to be done because we saw a subversion of the authority of this parliament and the national interest. And we in this parliament face a choice about not just whether we're going to assert our authority, though obviously that's very important, and not just assert the relevance that the people elected to this chamber, not just have the authority, but the skills, the capacity, the knowledge, the apartments, the infrastructure, to be able to back it up, but simply to make sure that all agreements between different entities and foreign governments is consistent with our national interest. So this is one about knowledge and capacity and understanding what is in our best interests as a nation. And sometimes there are disagreements between the states about such matters, and that's why we're empowered to make these decisions. But it's also important to understand whether the agreements that are being negotiated by different levels of government or entities with foreign governments are also consistent with our agreements we're negotiating with those countries as well. We shouldn't have states negotiating agreements with foreign governments that undermined our trade agreements or our defence pacts or our national security arrangements or that provide back doors for foreign interference or influence or economic engagement. And frankly, it astounds me that the members of the opposition somehow think this is problematic. I'm not sure what principle they're harking to. At best, I heard in his speech in running interference to defend a state government subverting this parliament from the member for Cryo was something about the politics of the day, making some ridiculous, audacious claim that somehow the issues that prompted the discussion on exactly these types of bills and the circumstances which tra far transcend day-to-day -day politics and go to global movements in national security, global movements in repositioning of power, contested environments and theatres of, of, uh, of uh, tension within our world, around the changing nature and relationship of multilateral, multilateral institutions, the changing nature of relationships between countries, all came down to something to do with the press release or something else. I mean, it starts to raise very serious questions about the judgment of the member for Cryo for going down that path, rather than looking at how he and the opposition can work together to advance the national interests of the Commonwealth. And the measures are relatively straightforward. It's to make sure there's approval regime and notification regime around those agreements that are being struck. We're not seeking to stop states, universities, institutes, various others councils negotiating with foreign governments where there's some advantage. We just kind of want a heads up. We just kind of want to know what it is you're signing up to. We just kind of want to know that you're not undermining our national security, our defence, our health relations, our diplomacy, our economic interests and the very sovereignty of this country and this parliament. And I would have thought that this bill should be able to pass this parliament easily for that exact reason. Because if we are not elected in this chamber to stand up for Australia's national interest, its place in the world, its security, its strength and its sovereignty, then frankly I do not know what members would be doing here. That's the basis in which we should support this bill. That's the basis in which members should not be moving trivial, meaningless amendments to try and virtue signal and to undermine or water it down. That's the basis in which the opposition should seriously question where their priorities lie. Because we want the strength of this country to be built on a bipartisan consensus around maintaining the integrity of our foreign relations between nations. Yes, sometimes there'll be differences of opinion around specific areas of approach. But that this parliament's role is to protect and defend the interests of the Commonwealth, despite the parochialism of the states, should not be something we should be distracted by.
and I would hope the members of the opposition could see past that and see the strength and the importance of this bill at this time as part of defending the security, the strength and the sovereignty of our nation.